Hi, everybody. Happy Friday and welcome. I am Serena Kappas, Senior Editorial Director of Scholastic Parents Online. And you are watching our show, um, our Facebook Live show called Talk with an Author. And our very, very, very special, I could say a lot more varies, <laughs> is Dave Pilkey. We are so thrilled to have him here today talking with us, talking with you, because you guys are going to be sending your questions in. And uh, it's really a treat. So this is a great way to start the weekend. So Dave, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Serena. Yeah. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. Well. I just, for those who don't know, but I'm sure most of you know, Dave, of course, is the creator of the Captain Underpants series, the Dogman series. He is an award-winning author. His new book, which I'm going to show you guys if you don't have it already, Dogman, A Tale of Two Kitties, is a number one bestseller, which is an incredible honor. How did you feel about that when you found out? Completely, completely blown away. It was, uh, it was a, a great day. So congratulations so, on that. You. And um, other things to note about Dave, he is a Caldecott uh, honor winner for his picture book, The Paper Boy, which is incredible. And this stat is incredible to me. The Captain Underpants book series has more than 80 million copies in print to date, which is insane. It's translated into more than 25 languages. And then, of course, for those who know, and I'm sure you went to the movies to see it, it was released as a, a major motion picture by DreamWorks. Um, and a few things about Dave, because a lot of the people watching the audience, you may be parents, um, and this will definitely be of interest to you, is that Dave, as a child, was, was uh, diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia. And when you learned to draw, you were in second grade, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, and that's how your, your imagination was kind of sparked during that time. Um, and Dave is really, as, as a lot of you have written, has been an inspiration to you, to your kids, uh, for his creativity and his fearlessness, and so we're just really thrilled to have you here. So let's get started. All right. So one of the, the questions I wanted to, to ask you about, Captain Underpants recently reached its 20th anniversary, which That's is correct. Yeah. such a milestone. Yeah. It's endured all these years. What, why do you think that it's resonated with so many people this, for this long? Well, um, can I draw and talk you at the same time? You can draw and all talk. Right. Well, let's do that. Um, I think one of the main reasons that Captain Underpants has, has stuck around for so long is I think that kids really relate to these two guys right here. Uh, this is Harold Hutchins, and uh, I'm going to draw his best friend in a second, George Beard. Um, a lot of kids ask me about Harold and George because they are really the stars of the Captain Underpants series. Um, if you look at the covers, it looks like it's a superhero type of story, but it's really a story of friendship about two kids who have, they share this creative friendship. And um, I think kids really relate to that. You know, superheroes are very, very popular nowadays. And I think everyone loves the idea of changing the world or saving the world. But, you know, let's be, let's be real. Nobody has superpowers. Nobody can fly. But I think George and Harold kind of show kids that you don't have to necessarily fly to have superpowers. Mm -hmm. Superpowers can just kind of be your creativity or your imagination. That can actually be a superpower. And that can actually save the world as well. So I think kids relate to that. And you've talked about the fact that you've seen yourself in each of these guys. That's right, yeah. Ha talk about that a little well, bit. Well, Harold and George um, are basically both different sides of my personality. When I wrote the first book, I can, be, I can be kind of a wild and crazy guy, but I'm also very shy and quiet and a little insecure at times, and so I took that, those two sides of my personality and divided it into these two characters and made them best friends. And over the years, they've taken on their own characteristics as well. So now now they're actually different than me, but but when it started out, they were just they were kind of like me. And take us back to second grade when you first started drawing the Captain Underpants series. Tell us about that time for you. Oh, yeah. Well, second grade was not the best time in the world for me. Um, as you said earlier, I was diagnosed with ADHD. Actually, they didn't have the term ADHD back in those days. Yeah. I was diagnosed with something that they called extreme hyperactivity. But I also was diagnosed with dyslexia. And that was really, 
kind of hard for me being in school and being the only kid who couldn't read. And I was having such a problem with not only reading, but paying attention, behaving. I was, I was always misbehaving in school. And my teacher didn't have a lot of the resources that teachers have nowadays to deal with kids with my challenges. So my teacher would often just send me out into the hallway. And I had nothing else to do out there. And I kind of wanted to you know, still be connected with my classmates. So I would sit out there and I would draw pictures. And that's where I kind of got the idea for Captain Underpants and, and for Dog Man. Dog Man was one of the first characters that I ever made up. And I would make these stories and make comic books about these characters. And that's kind of how I got my start. And why Captain Underpants? What was it about this character that, that sparked this creativity in you? Well, my teacher one day, I was sitting in class with all of my classmates and she was talking and she just happened to say the word underwear. And I don't know why, but we all just burst out laughing and she was, that was not the response she was going for. She did not want us to be laughing and she got very angry and she said, hey, Underwear is not funny, and we laughed even harder. And, and uh, she got even angrier. And, but the thing is, I, it, that was a huge moment for me because I realized, wow, underwear makes people laugh. Underwear is very powerful. I should, I should do something with that. So I took out a piece of paper and a pencil, and I drew my, my very first drawing of this guy here on that day. And, um, of course, it made everyone laugh made my teacher very angry and uh, <laughs> got me sent out into the hallway, but, but it was so popular with, with my classmates that I kept drawing him and I kept making up stories about him and he was always saving the world and fighting bad guys. I, I had no idea um, at that time in my life that almost 45 years later I'd still be drawing yeah. him, but, um, but I'm glad I am. And your parents were really supportive of you. Can you tell us a little bit about, you were having these struggles in school and you would come home and you'd be upset. And what would your parents do and what would they tell you? Well, that was, that was really the thing that kind of changed me because um, I would come home from school sometimes and I'd be really upset. Um, it was not, it was not all, always fun because I'd be like, how come I have to have all these problems? Why do I have to have all these challenges? How come I can't read? Why is my teacher always mad at me? And how come I'm you know, sitting out in the hallway all the time? And I was kind of looking at the dark side of it all. And fortunately, my mom, um, she is quite the optimist. She's always been that way. She's always been a glasses half full type of, actually she's a glasses overflowing type of person. Okay. And she would say to me, you know, honey, maybe you're, you're looking at these things the wrong way. Maybe, maybe, you're thinking of all these challenges as bad things. Maybe, maybe if you change the way you thought, you could see that that these might not all be challenges. May, perhaps something something good could come out of these things. Maybe maybe these times you're sitting on the hallway might inspire you to to tell stories mm -hmm. or to come up come up with characters and. Um, you know, at the very least, you're getting time in the hallway to practice your drawings. And, <laughs> and so she was, she was so inspirational to me. And, and um, it really helped me to change my attitude. And I think that was a, a big thing to, turn, to turning my life around. I, you know, we all have t challenges in our lives. And we can, it's up to us whether we think of them as good things or bad things. Yeah. And what about for parents, parents who are watching, and, and also if there are questions, we would love for you to tell us what you want to know from Dave. You can leave them in the comments below, so please do so. But for parents who have kids who might be having some learning challenges and struggles like you did, what advice would you give them? Well, I think one of the, the nicest things for me when I was a kid is um, not only the encouragement of my parents, but one thing that I, I wish that I'd had as a child is that I wish that um, I had known about other people who had similar challenges, yeah. who turned out okay. Um, I didn't know this at the time, but I was, I was a child of the 70s and I loved the Fonz. Everybody loved Fonzie. I didn't, you know, some of you parents will, I'm sure, know who Fonzie is. <laughs> and Fonzie had dyslexia. Even he didn't know it at the time, but I wish I had known that. It would have been right. so, so helpful. So um, my... Um, my parents uh, 
though, even though I didn't have, and, oh, then that's also a resource. You can go online and you can find, you know, examples of people who have dyslexia yeah. or ADHD or, yeah. and, he, and who grew up and overcame those challenges right. and, and became successful. That's, I think that's a really powerful thing to share with your kids. Yeah. But um, one thing that my parents did for me is they knew that my comics were getting me in trouble a lot in, in school. And so they wanted to still encourage me. So they, they actually commissioned um, a series of comic books for me. They asked me if I would draw some comics just for them. Oh, wow. And so I made a, a character just for them. His name is Waterman, and this is Waterman <laughs> right here. And he was a big puddle of water who was also a superhero, and he was always saving the world. But he was all made out of water. He could turn into ice. And, and my parents had one rule that I could never bring my Waterman comics to school. Um, because they didn't want them to get lost or thrown away. And when I was in my 20s, my parents surprised me by giving me back all my Waterman comics. Oh, and amazing. there were 20 of them, and I still have. They're the, the only comics that survived my childhood. That is amazing. Yeah. You know, what, one thing that we've heard, and we, we're getting questions in, and also we've gotten questions, um, is that we hear that you've inspired other kids to start to draw and to write and to, to become authors and illustrators. And this came from Amanda Weeks Pollard. She says, my son is seven and loves all of Dave Pilkey's books. He just had a Captain Underpants themed birthday party. <laughs> he wants to know if there are plans for a 13th epic Captain Underpants novel. He wishes he could go to Jerome Horowitz Elementary School because he thinks George and Harold would be pretty cool to have as friends. <laughs> Thank you, Dave, for showing kids with ADHD that their dreams can come true, come true. I enjoy reading your books almost as much as my son does. Thank you for getting my kiddo to love reading. Oh, that's so nice. So. And then we also heard from another mom who said, my, uh, her name is Dulce Adriana, and she says, my kids love you thanks to you. I have a writer and an illustrator at home. They have been working so hard writing their own books. We already have two comic books, and they are working on the third one because they can't stop reading Way to Go, Dave. Oh, that's so nice. So when you hear that, what does that say to you about the difference that you're making for kids? I, I am just overwhelmed at that. That is, that is the, the, actually the nicest compliment really because when I was a kid um, comics were sort of my way of connecting with my classmates uh, I was all, often separated from from everyone in the class by sitting out in the hallway and even when I was in the classroom uh, often my my teachers uh, to keep me out of trouble would would separate my desk from everyone else's. My desk would be right next to the teachers and everyone else would be away from me so I couldn't even borrow a pencil if I if I wanted to, and, and it was very tough. I, but comics uh, and telling stories and being creative, um, that was my way to stay connected with everyone. So um, it's very exciting to see that kids are finding their own ways to, to be connected with others by using their imaginations and their creativity. That was, that was always one of my hopes, that the kids would discover the joy of, of storytelling by not only reading some of these silly books, but also in the backs of the books, there are often how to draw sections that teach you how to draw the characters. Mm -hmm. And I, it was always my hope that kids would, would, you know, to take that as a jumping off point and start making their own stories. And we also hear from a lot of parents that, you know, for kids who are reluctant readers, reading your books has been an entryway for them to start reading. When they a chapter, regular chapter book might not have resonated with them, but your mm -hmm. books have made that difference, the visuals and just the impact of it. And so, you know, that's, that's got to be a pretty incredible feeling that you are able to sort of introduce kids to the world of reading because of your, your drawing. Oh, thank you. And we hear a, a question that's come through a lot is, do you prefer writing or drawing, or do you love them both? Actually, I would have to say that I love them both. Um, drawing is something that has always come, it seems like it's always come easy to me because it's something I've always loved. And... Writing is, is a challenge, but it's a challenge in the way that, that maybe a Sudoku puzzle is a challenge right. or a crossword is a challenge. It's a fun challenge. And so um, even to this day, um, I enjoy both of them, but, but actually for different reasons. So here's a question from Julie Dam. She says, we just finished reading the ninth Captain Underpants book, and my five-year-old son, Theo, wants to know why Dave, this is a quote, tricked us into thinking Captain Underpants was done and the world ended in that book. And she says, he and he and my eight-year-old, Amelie, would also like to know if any of the villains, like Professor Poopy Pants and Wedgie Woman, are inspired by real people that Dave knows. Thank you. Okay. So what can you tell us? Well, um, 
I think one of the things that I, especially in the book that the children were referring to, um, I pretended that the series was over just because um, I guess I wanted to see if everyone was paying attention. And um, it's fun to, to use words to give people a um, kind of a, an expectation that you pull the rug out from under them in the next book. That's, that's often the basis of jokes. In fact, that's why jokes work, because mm -hmm. you set up an expectation and then you, you don't follow through with what people are expecting. Mm -hmm. And that often makes people laugh. And um, the second question about whether the characters are inspired by real life characters. Of course, George and Harold were both inspired by myself and some of the challenges I had as a kid. And I suppose Mr. Krupp is kind of inspired by several different principles I had as a child. But this guy I'm drawing right here is Professor Poopy Pants, <laughs> also known as Tippy Tinkle Trousers. He, he changes his name halfway through the series because he of course, Professor Poopy Pants is a ridiculous name, and <laughs> so he he chooses a name that's less ridiculous, which is Tippy Tinkle Trousers. But um, <laughs> anyways, he was actually inspired by Albert Einstein. Um, he's the hair. he's a much <laughs> yes, the hair, of course, the hair. He's a much uh, snazzier dresser, of course. But um, but yeah, I didn't know Albert Einstein, but he's kind of the evil Albert Einstein. He's the evil Albert. Yes. Einstein. And I think we just got a question in um, from Jessica Kaitola again. Did Melvin Sneedley become a zombie nerd? Oh, my goodness. I should know that, right? I, <laughs> um, I think he did become a zombie nerd. I'm pretty sure every, all the kids in the school became zombie nerds. But, um, you know, to be honest, it's funny because kids will ask me questions about the books, and often I, I don't know the answer because I don't remember it. Um, I... I write the books, and then I usually move on to you the next on. book. Yeah, and, it's, and I don't usually go, go back and reread them. So um, that probably somebody in, your, in the audience might know that answer better than I So put it in the comments if you yeah. know the answer to that. And if you're just joining us, obviously we're here with Dave Pilkey on our show, Talk with an Author on Scholastic Parents. And we would love to hear from you, so please leave your comments below and let us know what you want to ask Dave because I'm sure there's lots of things you want to know. We have another question <clears throat> that came in from Anne Marie DeSantis. She says, what advice can you give young writers? Oh, well, I think my best advice for young writers is to keep writing no matter what you do. Um, that's probably the thing that really changed me. Um, you know, I, I did a lot of drawing in second grade, but really I had been drawing ever since I can remember, ever since I, I picked up a pencil. Yeah. And the, the whole idea, you know, what I always ask kids is like, if you wanted to be a great basketball player, what would you have to do? Mm -hmm. And they all know the answer, it's practice, you have to practice. And if you want to be uh, a great piano player, what do you have to do? And they all know the answer to that as well. Practice makes perfect, and especially yeah. when it comes to writing and to drawing, I really don't think you ever waste time. Even if you do a drawing that you don't particularly like and you end up crumpling it up and throwing it in the mm -hmm. wastebasket, still you've learned from those mistakes. Yeah. Um, and the more you do it, the more you learn, and the more you learn, the better you get. So That's absolutely true. Yeah. Um, here's another question that, that came in um, <clears throat> from Jessica Berlin. She says, my six-year-old son Mason has flown through all, in caps, all of Pilkey's books this summer. He loves them. He wants to ask Dave if he's going to make any more Captain Underpants books. Thank you for teaching my son to love reading. Oh, well, that's very nice. Um, actually, I do have plans for other stories that involve the characters from Captain Underpants. Um, at the end of book 12... Mr. Krupp kind of um, turned back into his, his old self, and it, it looks like he lost his superpowers, and, and when people snap their fingers, he doesn't really turn into the, uh, the hero anymore. So I'm not really sure where that's going to go, but I do know that, that George and Harold um, have escaped into a time machine to rescue their pet per pterodactyl and their, and their pet hamster. And I do, I have written a story about that rescue, and, and I'll get, I, I don't think it's giving too much away. I think people know, if you've read my books, you know that they're all, all the endings are usually happy, so Sulu and Crackers do get rescued. Um, 
but I'm not really sure when I'm going to get a chance to actually tell those stories. Um, because I've been working so so much on Dogman right Dog now. Dogman. Yeah. So speaking of Dogman, I'm going to show it again. This is the newest one, Dogman, A Tale of Two Kitties. And um, another question came in, a similar one, which was, my granddaughter is, a, this is from Stella Devora. She says, my granddaughter is obsessed with Dogman <laughs> and wants to know how many books are there going to be. Oh, in the Dogman series. <laughs> you know, I'm having so much fun with Dogman right now. Um, that I really hope there will be um, as many as I can. Yeah. It, it, I've, I've been making two books a year, um, and I would like to keep that schedule going if I could. Um, so I guess it depends on how many years I live. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I enjoy these characters so much, and I've been having such a good time. I, I hope there's 20, 30, 40. That, that would be... Uh, that would be really nice for, for me if I got to keep working with these guys for a while. And can you talk to us just a little bit, and then I think we have some more questions because so many people are, are writing in, which is awesome. A Tale of Two Kitties obviously has a literary allusion to it. Yes. Can you talk about the fact that these recent Dogman books and the one that's coming up um, have that sort of literary connection and what that inspiration was for you? Yes, yeah. Well, you know, like all of us, George and Harold are getting getting older, and they're and they're beginning to, in school, they're beginning to read new books, and um, they have a new teacher now, and her, their new teacher is, is asking them to read uh, classic literature. So George and Harold have just read A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, and they were actually inspired by some of the themes and some of the ideas in, in that book. And so they're taking those inspirations and, and inserting them into their their own comics, which I think is kind of a nice thing, yeah. because as we as we get older, we get hopefully more mature, and and um, and also because we're practicing more and more, we begin to um, make less and less mistakes. So you'll notice in George and Harold's comics, especially in the Dogman books, uh, like throughout Captain Underpants, when Captain Underpants started, there were a lot of misspelled words in their comics and a lot of poor grammar. But as the series progressed, the, the misspellings became less and less, and the grammar got better and better, and the drawings improved as well. And now that they're doing Dogman, there are, there are no misspellings. The grammar is uh, it's still not perfect because it's like the way the kids write uh, and... and uh, but the drawings are improving, and, and they're improving, their ideas are improving. I think that's kind of a, a nice uh, way to subtly show kids that, that that's kind of what life is about, yeah. is, is, um, uh, is practicing and improving, yeah. and, um, and hopefully that stuff shows up in, in your work as well. Yeah. We have another question um, coming in. Let's see. Okay. The question comes from... Um, Stephanie M. Brown, she says, do you think that you would have made such an impact to kids all over from all different generations? I used to read Captain Underpants back when I was a kid, and I'm 27 now. <laughs> I had no idea when I started out um, that Captain Underpants would, would be such a, that it would be all over the world and that it, there would be a movie. I had, I had absolutely no idea that any, any of that would happen. But uh, I'm so glad that I've... Um, that the books have, have found an audience and yeah. that, that their kids still like them today, even after 20 years. And then uh, Anahid Ceresi says, love your books. Are you going to make more Ook and Gluck books? Oh, Ook and Gluck, yeah. Um, I, have, I have actually written the second Ook and Gluck book. Um, uh, Ook and Gluck is, of course, the Kung Fu Caveman from the, from the Future series. And it's another spin-off of Captain Underpants. I'm drawing, I'm drawing Lily now. This, she's the baby dinosaur from that series. Uh, I do have another story. I wrote it uh, a couple of years ago in a cave, actually. Um, I, have a, I have a cave in Japan that, um, that I kayak to. And uh, so I wrote the book, and I think it, the only reason it hasn't come out yet is because I've been so busy with Dogman that I haven't had a chance to do the illustrations yet. But um, yes, I do plan to, con to continue the series. That's great. Um, and then, here's a fun question um, from Amanda Weeks Pollard. Dave, what do you like to do for fun? Well, of course, I love to draw for fun. Um, I still love to do that. Even when I'm not working, I usually have a pencil in my hand and I'm drawing. And um, 
I like to paint for fun. My, my wife and I sometimes go to those paint your own pottery places uh -huh. and, and we make dishes and plates and stuff. That's always fun. Uh, I love to kayak and I love bowling and I love movies. So nothing too fancy, but um, I love to travel too. And I'm very lucky that we, uh, we have family in Japan, so I get to spend a lot of time in Japan. And that's a very fascinating place with lots of wonderful art to explore. The history. Yes, and, yes, yeah. It, yeah. So when you saw, speaking of movies, when you saw Captain Underpants on the big screen, what was that experience like for you? Seeing Captain Underpants on the big screen was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I, I, um, I'm so lucky because I've heard of other authors who have been lucky enough to have their books turned into movies and and they were unhappy with the way they turned out or they were unhappy with the process but that none of that happened with me I, with DreamWorks Animation they were so good to me and they they wanted my advice they followed my advice and and the director David Soren um, he was he was so much fun to work with he really understood the characters he understood uh, that the stories aren't they're not about it's not about potty humor it's not about superheroes it's really about creative friendship and about the arts and about loyalty and and you can really feel the love up there on the screen yeah. and so I I and I love the movie so much I wouldn't change a frame I I I am so so thrilled with that. So happy. Do you think there might be another one? I hope so. Yeah. Because the reviews were so good, and so it, good. everyone who saw it loved it, and it it um it made back all its money. So yeah. so I hope I hope so. I haven't heard anything yet, but I, I um problem. I'm very hopeful. So we have a question that came in, and this is amazing. This mom wrote in: her six-year-old son loves everything Captain Underpants uh. and Dogman. And he came up with a list of 12 questions oh, for this discussion. Only, only 12. Only 12. Okay, all right. And again, I didn't say her name, so let me say that now. Karina Van Bogart, so thank you so much. I don't know your son's name, but he's very creative and he's got great questions. So we can't ask tw all 12, but um, why don't we ask just a couple. Um, what is your advice for someone who wants to be a cool author like you, and how did you start sharing publishing your work? Oh, I don't know that I have any advice for being a cool author. You might have to ask a cool one. I'm, <laughs> I'm a total nerd. But um, I, I think, you know, probably the same thing that I said earlier is that practice is, is incredibly important. The more you practice, the better you get. So if you're already making comics and if you're already drawing and already making up stories, you're on the right path. Yeah. You know, don't, don't ever stop. Because even, you know, I'll still look back at some of the comics that the Waterman comics I made when I was a kid, and I, I don't think they're very good, but, but you know, I had to make those so I could learn to get better. So yeah. I, would, I would definitely say to, to keep, keep drawing. And I thought I forgot the second question. What's oh, the, the, que the second question was about um, how did you start sharing publishing your work? Um, that is, oh, I, sorry, one we right ran out of paper. Here. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay, more paper. <laughs> All right. Um, I was very lucky when I was 19 years old. I um, I entered a contest. A little smaller. Yeah, it's a little we'll, smaller. We'll make it work. <laughs> but I entered a contest, and I'll. Um, I'm not sure if I can still draw this guy. Do you have another one? We've got another one here. Let me get it. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. We we, all right. There. That's I'll a be little. Be your bit. assistant. You got it. All right. Yeah, that's good. There, there used to be a contest called the National Written and Illustrated by Contest for Students, and I entered that when I was 19 years old, and I wrote, a, I wrote my very first children's book. It was called World War I, and it was about this polar bear and also a fox and a raccoon, and they got, it was a, it was a fictional story, but they, they got involved in a, um, a big fight, and they found a way to solve their problems peacefully. And I was very surprised that I won the contest, and the, the first prize was that they published your book, and so that's how I got my start. Amazing. And unfortunately, that contest isn't around anymore, but I am very lucky that I get to work with Scholastic, and um, Scholastic has a lot of resources for young writers yeah. and young artists, young poets. Um, they have a contest every year that you can uh, enter. You can find out more about that on Scholastic's website. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you have a, a young person in your life who loves to be creative, um, Scholastic uh, has this, this, great, this great contest. And uh, there's a lot of 
a lot of wonderful resources. Yeah, absolutely. And for parents who are, are watching, um, you know, this is Scholastic Parents, and we have lots of great advice on, on helping nurture your kids in school. And it's scholastic.com slash parents. I want to get one final question in um, because we're sadly running out of time because I feel like we could just keep talking. <laughs> Um, and this is, a, this, I think this is going to be a tough one to answer, but it's from Gigi Wong Dav, and she says, what is your favorite character out of those you created? That's a tough one. Oh, well, <laughs> I think right, you know, it changes over time, and, um, but I think right now, my favorite character is the little kitten from um, the brand new book. So cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Dog Man, A Tale of Two Kitties is about... Um, Petey the cat, who is the bad guy, and he's, I hope I'm not giving too much away, but he's, he's trying to make a clone of himself, and he accidentally, oh yeah. The little kitty here. Right. He, ac he <laughs> accidentally makes a, uh, a little kitten clone of himself, and that was not his plan, and in fact, I'll, I'll draw a little Petey again here. So we have this little unwanted kitten in this story. And he, he starts out the story very sad, but he eventually finds love with Dog Man. And I just love this little kitten, and I, I really love the, um, the potential that he has because he's very hopeful. I think he has a lot of my mom in him. He's an optimist, and he's trying to make his way in the world, trying to figure out, um, you know, where he comes from. and yeah. and. The new book, actually, I have a new book coming out in December called Dog Man and Cat Kid. And George and Harold are still reading classical literature. And they just finished the new book by John Steinbeck, or actually an old book by John Steinbeck, right. called, called East of Eden. And that deals a lot with, with good and evil and, and how we become who we are and whether we are more influenced by our, our DNA or by our... Um, environment and so little pd is dealing with a lot of those issues in the next book and um everything turns out fine of course but yeah. but i i really love the potential in this and this little fella he's adorable oh thank you well so i want to make sure a lot of people have asked as we wrap up where can i see dave where is he going to be if you want to know and you want to meet dave in person he's going to be doing events all over the country go to pilkey.com or scholastic.com slash Pilkey Power to find out what appearances Dave's going to be making in the near future. And, um, and for those of you who are watching, who if you, you, we've heard from you that your kids are in school and weren't able to watch it, you can watch it. Go back to our Facebook page. After this is over, you can re-watch it, watch it as many times as you want. And thank you to everybody for answering, asking questions. And for you being here, Dave, it's been such a pleasure. really is. You're such an inspiration to so many. Oh. So thank you for taking the time out to thank be you. with us today. Thank I really you. appreciate it. It was a, it was a great pleasure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye.